All right. Thanks very much um, to the organizers and, and to everyone for coming. So uh, what I want to do in this talk is to give a broad overview of um, some recent work on the information paradox and the entropy of Hawking radiation. So uh, I don't need to introduce the paradox, but I want to emphasize one thing, uh, which is that uh, black hole evaporation, Hawking radiation, is a process of entanglement production between the black hole interior and the exterior. So uh, we have the Hawking radiation being produced on the outside. Uh, the fact that this has entropy is because it's in an entangled state with the interior partners and uh, this entropy is becoming large. So uh, what we're gonna discuss is the fine grain entropy of the radiation. We're collecting the Hawking radiation up here uh, near Scribe Plus. And uh, we want to calculate or understand uh, the fine grain entropy, that is the von Neumann entropy of the density matrix of this radiation. Uh, so this is um, summarized by the page curve. So Hawking's calculation uh, is that the entropy of the radiation goes up, up, up as the black hole is evaporating. Uh, eventually the black hole is gone uh, and the entropy saturates. This is a fine grain entropy of the radiation saturates at some finite number. So that's uh, unitarity loss and that's the problem. Um, it's, it's clearly there at late times, but we can sharpen this um, by comparing it to the entropy of the black hole itself. So if we believe that the entropy of the black hole is given by its area over four, um, then actually we have a problem, not just at late times, but as soon as these two lines cross, because uh, the entropy in the radiation, as I said, is coming from entanglement with the black hole. And while you can't create the most, the most amount of entropy you can create with entanglement, is the entropy of the, the thing that you're entangling with, the coarse grain entropy of the thing that you're entangling with. Okay, so as soon as these two lines cross, uh, we can see the paradox and that crossing uh, is known as the page time. So uh, what Page argued on general grounds from uh, unitarity is that um, the true, von, if, if black holes evaporate unitarily, then the true von Neumann entropy, the, the true fine grained entropy of the radiation should start out agreeing with Hawking's calculation going up. And then at this transition point, it should turn over uh, suddenly and go back down following the black hole entropy back down to zero. And what I'm gonna discuss in this talk is how to obtain the unitary page curve uh, directly from a GR calculation. So the, the, the first I want to just um, say a, a few words about the status of the paradox from my point of view. So uh, the proposed resolutions to this problem mostly fall into three categories. Uh, the first I could summarize as saying information is just lost. Uh, the, the information goes into the black hole and it disappears at the singularity. Uh, this implies that there are remnants, that is, Planck-sized objects with arbitrarily large entropy. Um, so this is one possibility. Um, a second possibility is that there's structure at the horizon. Uh, that is, uh, the black holes of general relativity are, for some reason, just not relevant to this problem. There's fuzzballs or firewalls or something else uh, when you reach the horizon. And if you jump in, you will not see the smooth state uh, that, that was used in Hawking's calculation. And the third one, uh, which is the one that I'll focus on, is that they're non-perturbative effects. Effects of order e to the minus s, where s is the entropy of the black hole. Uh, in this option, evaporation is unitary. Um, there's a slight non-locality required um, in order to make it unitary. I think that's that's guaranteed almost by definition. You know, the inside of the black hole is, is space-like separated from the, the radiation where we're trying to get the information out. So some amount of, of non-locality is required, 
but I want to emphasize that this is very mild. It's a tiny amount of non-locality. It does not require large non-locality. And I think that this is to be expected in quantum gravity. Uh, we don't have gauge invariant local observables in quantum gravity. And I don't think there's a problem uh, with having these tiny e to the minus effects, e to the minus s effects. So it's just the amount of non-locality that we might expect. Now, how can these non-perturbative effects help with the paradox? Well, when we say that uh, Hawking radiation is thermal, what we really mean is that um, it's thermal up to the things that we haven't calculated. So this is a calculation that's been doing, that's being done in the low energy effective field theory of gravity coupled to quantum fields. So what this calculation really shows is that the Hawking radiation is thermal uh, with some calculate with some corrections that you can in principle calculate order by order. Uh, and then there could be non-perturbative corrections uh, of order e to the minus s that you can't capture from just doing quantum field theory on a fixed curve background. Now, just as a matter of, of asking how big the corrections are, it's very easy to see that e to the minus s corrections to each matrix element of this density matrix are big enough to fix the entropy. Now, if you, if you allow me to put in any old e to the minus s terms in that giant matrix, uh, then when you calculate the fine grain entropy, you're doing this trace and you're summing e to the s terms, so these tiny e to the minus s, s effects, uh, even though these are very tiny effects in the density matrix, um, can add up and produce a leading order effect on the entropy. So just as a matter of, 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 of looking at the size of the, these effects, it's clear that they're big enough. But of course, this is just wishful thinking if we can't, uh, if we can't calculate them, okay? if we have no idea where they come from or how to calculate them. And so what I'm going to describe is that um, we now do know how to calculate some of these some of these corrections. So to summarize the developments that I'll tell you about, uh, some of these e to the minus s non-perturbative corrections can be calculated from the gravitational path integral. The result of this calculation is a small entropy that exactly agrees with the dotted line, the unitary page curve, and is consistent with unitarity. I want to make the caveat, and I'll come back to this at the end, that this is a Euclidean path integral calculation and that means it's sidestepping uh, some of the some of the difficulty here. Um, and well, let me just leave that as a caveat for now, and I'll come back to it. Um, the ideas that I'll talk about um, borrowed were borrowed from uh, holography and string theory, um, but nothing in this calculation requires either of those. I'm going to be describing uh, ordinary black holes in general relativity. I'll just uh, leave these references uh, up here for you. Let me advertise uh, the review article that we wrote recently on this, um, which is um, written for a general audience, uh, basically should be accessible to anyone who knows some GR. OK, so um, I'm fir first going to describe the, the, the answer. So this is a this is a proposal. This was a proposal. It's called called uh, the Island Proposal, and um, uh, let me state the proposal. So we're interested in we have this evaporating black hole. We're interested in calculating the von Neumann entropy of the the radiation region, the red region outside the black hole here, and uh, the proposal is the following formula. Uh, calculates that fine grain entropy. So here's the formula. Let me uh, break it down a little bit. So uh, inside the brackets, um, what this says is that if we were just calculating the entropy of the red region, but uh, we should consider uh, a, an island region, which is inside the black hole. This is region I. Uh, and then what this thing in brackets is, is the generalized entropy of I union, of the island union, the radiation. Okay, so it has a, it has a, this, this thing has a contribution from the area of the island. 
and it has a contribution from the ordinary quantum field theory uh, calculation of the von Neumann entropy of quantum fields in the joint region, island and radiation. Now it's important uh, to note here that um, if this island is large, then Hawking radiation does not contribute uh, to the, the, the second term here. Okay, so Hawking radiation contributes to the, um, to the fine grained entropy of, of the red region alone. But if you keep track of both a particle and its entangled partner, uh, then that does not contribute. If you have access to both of them, then that doesn't contribute anything to the fine grained entanglement. So to finish explaining this formula, so we take the generalized entropy of, of this joint region, then we extremize over the choice of island. We seek all the extrema. Uh, and if there's more than one, we then minimize over the choice of extrema. Okay, so that's the island formula. And um, as I said, this was proposed based on similar ideas in ADS CFT, uh, but later in the talk, I'm going to justify it directly from the gravitational path. So, how does this help with uh, understanding the entropy of Hawking radiation? Well, let's see what it gives. Um, at early times, what happens is that uh, the the best you can do is to have well, there there are simply no extrema of the generalized entropy uh, at early times. So, um, I is just the empty set. There is no island, and uh, the answer to this calculation is then just the ordinary uh, is just the ordinary fine grained entropy of the radiation. So that's going to agree at early times with Hawking's calculation. At late times, uh, when you go through this extremization, what you find is that uh, now you have all this Hawking radiation in the outside entangled with the interior. And that contributes to this, to this term here. That contributes to this formula. And the, re the result is a non-trivial extremum of the generalized entropy. In fact, what happens is that the, the island at late times basically fills up uh, the entire interior of the black hole. So it'll just, uh, this black dot will essentially sit very close to the horizon. And uh, when that happens, um, the, the QFT part of this calculation doesn't see the Hawking radiation. So now the entropy is just given by area of the black hole over four. And that's decreasing as the black hole evaporates. So this goes to zero. And um, it is, if this is the correct entropy, then uh, this is consistent with unitarity. This gives uh, the curve that goes up and then uh, switches over and comes back down. So this is the proposal. Um, I'm going to explain where this comes from from the path integral. But first, a word of interpretation. Now, this slide is uh, this slide is um, more speculative in that this is how we interpret it in the ADS CFT correspondence, and um, so I would say it's it suggests the similar thing for for say black holes in flat space, um, but uh, this still needs to be understood better. So um, the interpretation is that well, the point is that this is not just a formula for the entropy. Okay, so once you have this entropy formula, um, the island has, a, has an interpretation. And the, this is that the island is actually encoded in the radiation uh, in the sense of a holographic duality. In particular, any operators inside the island, like some field operator phi of x, where x is in this island here, uh, is um, in principle actually an operator that you can build out of the radiation. So this encoding allows non-local operations in principle. If you have a, a very powerful quantum computer that can manipulate the radiation, you can do operations inside the island, but only with, uh, for practical purposes, impossibly complex uh, operations, it's, it's extraordinarily complex. So this is uh, the interpretation. 
Um, so what I'm going to do in the rest of the talk is to explain where this formula comes from and how it arises from the gravitational path integral. We're going to derive this um, by following the usual rules of Euclidean gravity. What we're going to do is a replica calculation of the von Neumann entropy. So uh, rho sub r here is the, is the density matrix of the radiation. And we're, we want to calculate its von Neumann entropy. So in the replica trick, logs are, are difficult to deal with. So in the replica trick, we replace this with the uh, replica partition function, or Rennie entropy. So this z of n is a trace of rho to the n. This is something that you need n copies of the black hole uh, to, to calculate. Uh, and if you can calculate this for all n, and furthermore, if you can analytically continue this in the replica number n, number of replicas, uh, to n close to 1, then uh, you can take this derivative at 1 and, and turn that into a log and read off the von Neumann entropy. Okay, so this is the calculation we're going to do. We're going to calculate these uh, replica partition functions using the Euclidean path integral. And then we're going to continue to n near 1 to calculate the entropy. So I'll start with the uh, n equals 1 replica. And I'm going to describe these calculations in Euclidean signature because uh, in Lorentzian signature, say for an actual vap black hole that, that formed from collapse and is then evaporating. Um, I'd have to draw I'd have to draw complex geometries and I don't know how to draw that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna describe this in I'm gonna draw the pictures in Euclidean signature, um, but they apply also to black holes that form from collapse. Now the n equals one replica, this is a familiar problem. Okay, so this is just one copy of the black hole. And uh, we know how to do Euclidean calculations with one copy of a black hole. This is the usual uh, Gibbons Hawking cigar uh, geometry, that is the, the Euclidean black hole solution. So the calculation of uh, trace of one copy of rho is just the usual calculation of the um, free energy of the black hole from the Euclidean action. And of course, there are, there are quantum corrections to that. Uh, so there's a radiation region, the red region out here, uh, but the choice of region in this calculation will just will just drop out. The answer is independent of the region, and is just the um, is just the 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 calculation on the black hole itself. What I want to um, emphasize here is that when we do this calculation, uh, we're doing a gravitational path integral. So of course we don't get to specify the geometry that we're that we're that we're that we're integrating over here. What we get to specify is the boundary conditions. Okay, so we so we're doing a, a gravitational path integral with some boundary conditions far away from the black hole. I've drawn a, a imaginary line here separating the black hole region from uh, the, the the distant region. So we're doing a path integral with some boundary conditions out here. And then um, it's up to gravity to tell us how to fill in the rest of this geometry. And of course, there's this saddle point contribution to the path integral, which is the Euclidean black hole itself. But this part here uh, was filled in by the gravitational path integral and in solving the Einstein equations. It's not something that we get to put in by hand. So now let me go to the uh, more interesting case of what happens when we calculate the, the two replica partition function. So we want to remember rho r is the density matrix of the radiation. And we want to calculate the trace of rho to r squared. Um, in the, there, there are going to be multiple contributions to this. The first one is the one uh, that I'll call the Hawking saddle. And it looks like this. So let me go through this. The top part here represents uh, the path integral that calculates one copy of the density matrix. That's one of the, one of the rows of Rs. 
Uh, the one down here is the other copy of rho sub r. Now there's a matrix multiplication going on. Uh, this is trace. There's a matrix multiplication between these these two rho sub r's, and the way that's captured in the path integral is to glue these manifolds together along the uh, radiation region, and that's what all these uh, squiggles and and dots represent. So what we have here is is two copies of the Euclidean black hole, which are glued together through a branch cut uh, along the radiation region. Just as in the n equals one copy, uh, it's a the the path integral we're really doing here is one at fixed boundary is one where we fix the boundary conditions, not the geometry. Okay, so the boundary conditions for this calculation are that we should do the gravitational path integral with uh, the boundary conditions drawn here. That is uh, two two thermal circles glued together along the radiation region, and then it's up to gravity to fill in the rest of that saddle point for us. Now that I've, now that I've drawn it this way, I think it's uh, clear that there's another possibility that we should also consider a topology where uh, the two black holes are joined through the, uh, through the Euclidean interior, okay, through the Euclidean region. Okay, and so the claim is that uh, actually there are saddle points, there are saddle points that look like this for, for, for black holes that, that form from collapse. And um, they're, they, they obey the same boundary conditions as, uh, as we usually would impose to calculate this path integral, uh, but are higher topology. If we include those in the semi-classical approximation, in the semi-classical approximation to the path integral, then now we get a second contribution. So the, the first contribution comes from this uh, disjoint saddle. I call it the Hawking saddle because if you, if, you use, if you use this saddle to calculate the entropy, then uh, you'll get back Hawking's uh, linearly increasing uh, von Neumann entropy. So if you, if you use these disconnected saddles, that'll give you back uh, the, the non-unitary answer. But now we have this second contribution coming from the wormhole. Now, how can the second, so these second contribution, these saddle points exist, but how can they possibly ever matter? Uh, you know, this is, a, this is a tiny effect, so how can this possibly change anything? Well, the answer is that uh, the, the first contribution here is suppressed by the large entanglement of the radiation with the interior. It's important here that we're not just calculating gravitational actions, we're also including the matter effects. And when you include the matter effects on this Hawking saddle, there's a contribution uh, that comes from the entanglement of the matter of the matter fields between interior and exterior. And that suppresses this. Okay, so as the, as the Hawking entropy, as Hawking's calculation of the entropy goes up, this contribution to the path integral becomes more and more suppressed. The wormhole contribution at early times is non-perturbatively small. It's, uh, there's a there's a additional one over G Newton cost from, uh, to the action from putting in this wormhole, but that cost is constant in time or, or actually the cost is, is decreasing with the area of the black hole. So this is suppressed by going to higher topology, um, but becomes important at late times. So that's the basic idea. Um, now, that was the second replica. To think about the von Neumann entropy, we have to go to higher replicas. Here's just a, a cartoon for what things start to look like at n equals 3. And you can continue this to higher n. For the von Neumann entropy, recall that we need to analytically continue in the replica number, the number of replicas n. And uh, then we need to take we need to take n near one, and take calculate this derivative. Okay, so this calculation can be done, and the result of this uh, calculation we have to calculate the on shell act. You have to find these saddles, calculate the on shell action, continue them, 
send n to one. And the result of that calculation is exactly the island formula that I described before. So the result of that calculation is this proposal uh, that when you, that the right way to calculate the von Neumann entropy of the radiation is to include this island in the black hole interior. Note that I'm not putting the island in by hand. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not deciding that there has to be an island. I'm, I'm just doing the calculation using general relativity. And general relativity is telling me at the end of the calculation that the island is there, like it or not. To sort of recap, so let me recap uh, the, this calculation. The point is that when you consider replicas, you have multiple copies of the black hole that uh, wormholes form joining the black hole interiors. So in the replica method, dynamical wormholes appear connecting the interiors. Uh, in evaporating black holes, these are complex saddles, which are similar to instantons that we can construct by explicit solution of the equations of motion for gravity coupled to matter uh, in some simple cases. So these are, these are uh, back reacted solutions where the wormhole is supported by the uh, quantum stress tensor of the matter fields coming from the Hawking radiation. Uh, and finally, in the replica limit, which is this limit n to one, there are no wormholes anymore. But now, if there's only one copy, then there can't be any wormhole. Uh, it was only existing in this auxiliary calculation. So in the, in, as n to one, n is taken to one, the wormholes disappear, um, but the von Neumann entropy is modified. If we return to the page curve, then uh, the conclusion is that at early times, the Hawking saddle in the replica calculation dominates the path integral, but that uh, there's an exchange of dominance when the entropy of the Hawking radiation becomes too large. And then, uh, then the wormhole saddle takes over and gives you the, the decreasing part of the page curve. So I also want to say that this, this plot that I'm drawing here, this is not just a cartoon. This is a plot. OK, so this is, this is a, there's a detailed calculation that um, gives exactly this curve, including uh, the, the dotted line matching these other calculations. The one I'm drawing here is for a simple two-dimensional model where these, where these are linear. If you do this in, in higher dimensions, then these are, these are curves. Um, and, and again, it will match uh, the expectation of from, from unitary. OK, I'll just make a couple of remarks and then wrap up. Um, the main conclusion is that the path integral knows about the unitary page curve. I consider this evidence for unitary evaporation. Uh, does it prove that evaporation is unitary? No, uh, no, it doesn't prove that. Um, so to, this is the caveat that I mentioned at the beginning. So let me explain what I mean. So uh, for comparison, um, let's think about the ordinary entropy of the black hole. So Gibbons and Hawking use the Euclidean path integral to calculate the black hole entropy. This is a thermodynamic calculation. They use the, the Euclidean path integral and, and thermodynamic formulas to show that the entropy was area over four uh, in agreement with the Bekenstein-Hawking entropy. Uh, but this does not prove that the actual microscopic entropy of quantum gravity, uh, of a black hole in quantum gravity, is the area over four. Okay, the, the, the question of the microscopic entropy is a question about the, the UV. And um, checking, so, so we think that this area over four gives the right answer for the microscopic entropy in the UV theory. Uh, but just doing the Euclidean path integral can't settle that question. It's a UV question. And the, the situation with the, with, the, with the calculation that I've just described is very similar. Okay, so we've done a replica calculation using the Euclidean path integral, and uh, we got the, the unitary answer. 
but uh, by going through the path integral, we sort of sidestepped the microscopics. Okay, we have not shown, uh, just, just as here, we have not shown that there really is a Lorentzian evolution of the density matrix, uh, which microscopically reproduces the, the binomial entropy that we calculated. Okay, so it's a very, it's, it's a very similar, very similar situation. So that's why I say I, I think of this as, as being compatible with unitary evolution. I think it's evidence in that direction, um, but it's not a microscopic calculation of the entropy. Now, uh, I also want to mention that this raises other questions. There's a long history of trying to include wormholes in the gravitational path integral, and there's a long history of, of that causing difficulties. In particular, it's not clear that wormholes themselves uh, are compatible with ordinary quantum mechanics, because there are other situations where wormholes seem to violate some basic features of, of quantum mechanics. I won't get into it, but it's basically because in quantum mechanics, you need to be able to factorize by inserting a complete set of states. And when you have higher topologies in your path integral, uh, you can, you can uh, cause problems with that factorization. So I'm going to end there and conclude. Uh, the conclusion is that the ordinary rules of the Euclidean path integral can be used to calculate the entropy of Hawking radiation. The result agrees with unitarity and quantitatively matches the earlier expectation uh, based on unitarity, uh, but it also highlights the remaining puzzles of how to interpret the gravitational path integral, and in particular, how to interpret higher topologies uh, in that path integral. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much for a very nice <laughs> talk. So are there uh, questions maybe just, uh, I can see the chat, but I don't see any. There is a question by Gia, by Shinji. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. So, um, uh, so my, my question, okay, I have many questions, but uh, my, one is, so I, I have shown that there are corrections that go is one over S uh, to Hogging radiation. And uh, that's enormously more important than exponent minus S corrections. And you, in your analysis, this means that in your analysis, you are ignoring a leading order effect. I mean, enormously more important than exponent minus S. So I, so I, I don't see how that analysis can, can, can be trusted. So well, it, it, yeah, I, that's I, my question. I think there's going to be a- I don't understand based on what you are ignoring one over S corrections. So- Which are there, oh, I, I've shown local, local one over S corrections aren't going to help with the entropy. So if you have non-local one over S corrections, then, then you have some violently non-local effects in, in, in quantum gravity in the presence of a black hole. Um, well, I don't say what you mean. I'm just saying there are corrections to Hawking evaporation. To the leading order, it's thermal. Then yeah, if, finite, they're local, if, if those corrections, corrections come from local physics. It's one over S. I mean, I, I, call, I don't know what, what you mean, local, non-local. There are corrections to the spectrum of, of radiation, uh, which goes as one over s. Now, what I don't understand, you are ignoring one over s correction while keeping exponent minus s corrections, which are completely negligible as compared to one over s corrections. So I don't see how your analysis can be trusted. That's, that's my question. Yeah, my, my answer is that if you've included one over s corrections that are non-local, then you're modifying general relativity you at very large scales. If they're local, then they won't change the page curve and they won't change the analysis that I've described. No, but you checked those one over S corrections that I have shown and you are saying they are non local or what, what is your answer? I don't understand the answer. It, that, the question is not that whether we, if include or not, we have to include all the corrections that are there. Correspondingly, there are corrections which are more important and less important. I'm just saying I'm happy to buy that one over S corrections are not important. If you have shown that, but I mean, then then this this requires to be shown. That's if, all I'm if saying. If you're talking about quantum corrections that come from general relativity, then yes, no, we can about one over s corrections in finite entropy. Those are intrinsically quantum quantum gravity corrections, obviously. Um, so if they are not there, this has to be demonstrated. Um, then I made a mistake. 
sure. I mean, if, then if that's that's demonstrated, fine. But uh, but I don't think I made a mistake. I think they are there, and that, that's for sure. What if a related question is: Does this method allow you to get the fact that the the radiation has more entropy than the decrease in the in the Bekenstein Hawking formula. I mean, like in your graph, the, the, the final entropy of the radiation of Hawking's formula is, is greater by, you know, a factor of one and a half or something or other from from the uh, but I don't know, does that does the this replica trick allow you to allow you to calculate that, that that the, uh, the that it rises steeper than the than the decline in the in the area over four? Yes, it does. Yes, the 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 replica trick gives exactly the dotted line, which which follows exactly Hawking's calculation at early times and, and rises faster than the than the area is decreasing. Um, so it does reproduce that 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 effect. Is that is is that correction? Is that maybe something that Gia was talking about or something? Is that an example of something? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so in 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 my language, these one over s corrections are 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 are, are really visible. I mean, not in my language, in, in general language, for example, in, in all the approaches to uh, virtually, I don't, I cannot imagine any approach to, to, to computing corrections in which one over S corrections exactly cancel to all orders. No, we've, um, we've included, we've included quantum corrections. Correction. Quantum corrections you, you were essential. Sorry. Yeah, quantum sorry. corrections were essential and we've included them. If, if the effects that you're talking about are included in the quantum field theory of low energy GR, then we've included them. No, GR is not a quantum theory. So for example, we have, for, for instance, one computation I have done is in, in string theory computation. In string theory, you, you see this one over, uh, one over S corrections very, very explicitly. Um, for example, you need theory of quantum gravity to do them. Of course, obviously, you, you cannot do them in, in classical GR. But what confused me is that you, at, at the beginning, you said that you are, you are after exponent minus S corrections. And obviously, it's a legitimate question, because I have computed one over S corrections, which are infinitely more important, at least naively. But maybe somehow you are including those. I don't know. I'm not claiming that you. I don't believe we uh, need anything I, beyond semi-classical GR to calculate one over S corrections. Ah, no, then, OK. So then, then this, this explains, because you see, this is very important, because Semi-classical GR doesn't capture one over S corrections. This is very important, actually. Um, then, so then yeah, you're modifying I, GR in an essential way, and it's not the theory that I've considered here. Uh, this is sort of reminiscent. So sorry to take your time, but it's, it, there's, a, there's a very nice analogy. Actually, in QCD, long ago, I mean, in the 80s, people thought that the, the effects that were important for, for certain, certain QCD corrections we're coming from the instantons, and they, they were going like exponent minus n, uh, because Toft showed that instantons generates, uh, for, for, let's say, eta prime mass, and they go exponent minus n. And people were completely missing one over n corrections. And then Witten and Valenciano, they showed that actually they are much more important corrections, which are one over n. And uh, so that's my point. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to make, make this point in, in gravity that we have been missing this one over s corrections uh, systematically, and th they should be taken care of somehow. I don't know. May maybe your analysis somehow takes care of them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in some some way or something. I mean, I, I, it's just a question. I'm not claiming that you are. Um... I, I, okay. Maybe we should. Uh, go ahead. Other thing. I, I give yeah, sure. my answer is only what I said. I don't have anything else to add. Require, we require more conversation. I mean, I just yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, well, I, th I think yeah that it's uh, you know time maybe to uh, but thanks very much. <laughs> uh,